One of the questions that I often see asked in forums and by users of events entry is how they can get alerted uh, when a specific text is being logged to a log file such as uh, the log file of IIS. So in many cases uh, users are running critical websites through IIS and they want to know if there's a problem such as a page not found or a particular error being logged for example or a particular error code. So in this video I'll show you how you can monitor any log file and with the example of an IIS log file with Event Entry Lite and how you can get an email alert when that happens. So I'm on a test machine here that has IIS installed. We can see here that we have a page from the local IIS installation. It works and we also have a very plain Event Entry Lite installed. So the first step when we're monitoring a log file is that we have to define the log file. We have to tell Event Entry where is this file object. And you do this by clicking on log files here and then either on the ribbon or here clicking on define files. You'll see that in Event Entry Lite this is empty. In the full version of Event Entry you have a number of uh, predefined files here along with log file definitions for database consolidation. Uh, but we'll skip this and we'll start and I'll show you how to do this from scratch here. So we hit the plus button, of course, and we'll browse to the path where the log file is. So in this case, the log files are located in the C INET pub logs log file directory that's on a 2016 machine. So I'm just going to copy and paste this directory, but of course you can also use the browse button. For simplicity, I'm just going to call this IIS. Um, and we are not going to include subdirectories. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say that we want to monitor any .log file. We can't see the extension here, but if we click the properties, we can see that it's a .log extension. And of course, we can change the view settings here to see the extension as well. You could specify or you know, limit this further by saying u underscore, for example, if you had other log files in here. Um, and I'm going to do that. So I'm going to say any uh, file that starts with u underscore and that ends with dot log, uh, we want to monitor that. There's no reason to really provide notes here. So the, the, the file is now defined here. And so keep in mind this is a non delimited file, which means that we're not going to be consolidating this into the database. That's uh, the only thing that Event Entry Lite supports, but that's all we need because we just want to get alerted when specific text occurs in the log file. Now that we have the log file definition set up, we need to create a package and assign this log file to one or more hosts. So if you go back to log files, you will notice that there is no plus icon here because no log file packages have been assigned. So I'm going to add a package and I'm just going to call this IS as well. And it's giving us a little warning here saying that this package is not assigned. Uh, so this package will not be valid. Of course this package isn't doing anything anyhow because there's no log files uh, being referenced quite yet. So I'm going to make this global. You can also assign it. So this is a global package so it's complaining but if I un un make it unglobal uh, I can also have the option of assigning this package here and I also have the option of dynamically assigning this package. So I can say only or automatically assign this package if IIS is installed, for example. So I'm going to make this global again and I'm going to say add log file. So we only have one log file, so we're going to select that and we're going to click OK. So what happens now is that we have a log file package that's assigned to any host that we're monitoring. So we only have one host, so this is really the easiest way to do it. And um, we have the definition, the log file definition here referenced by a log file object. Database consolidation, so that's for the full edition, so we're uh, interested in the event log alerts. So we're going to activate that here, we're going to say log to application event log. I'm going to switch this to a warning, so anytime something gets logged that matches our filter, I'm going to get uh, a warning event in the event log. So the next section we have to pay attention to is settings. There's two options, there's two ways to do this. 
The first option is include, and it's important that we read this here because sometimes people are a bit confused by this. So this says log all lines to the event log except for exclusions below. So for the event log, that's probably not something that you'll want because if you have a very busy IES log file, you could easily end up with thousands of event log entries because of this. Instead, we're going to leave the default, which says exclude only log lines to the event log that are included below. And we are going to decide, determine what do we want to actually look for. So for that uh, matter, we're going to open up this log file. And we'll see here, here are some sample entries from just before. So I just, just going to refresh the page. We had a couple of entries here showing us what we accessed. And what's important here is this number 200 here, because that means that uh, the page uh, that's the HTTP status code, which means the page was accessed successfully. On the other hand, if we try to access it, access a page that doesn't exist, we get a 404 error here. And that's what we want. So we'll say, in this particular example, we'll say, hey, uh, send us an email every time a 404 page is being accessed. Again, this can be changed to whatever you'd like, uh, a redirect or any sort of uh, specific browser that's collect, uh, connecting or whatnot. But in this example, we'll say uh, we'll want to know if uh, a 404 error is being logged. So how would this work? So we have two options of matching text in here. So this is basically looking at every, so every time a new line appears in this log file, it's being passed through events entry which evaluates all the filters in this list. And you have two options for matching. One is wildcard, which is the easiest, which just, you know, asterisk and question mark symbols. For example, you know, star error, it would give us any line that contains the word error. Whereas with regex, you'd have to be a little more, uh, you have to use regex patterns, for example, like this. Uh, in our case, we should be able to get away uh, without uh, regex and just uh, keep using the standard wildcard match. But uh, what type of pattern do we need? So if we go back to the log file here, we'll see uh, just looking for 404 is probably not a good idea because 404 could just appear just about um, anywhere. It's not going to be able to appear in the date or the time since there's just two digits. Uh, probably not going to occur in the, in the file name, not in the port uh, either, uh, probably not going to appear in the browser, So, uh, but it could appear uh, back here. Um, but, uh, what we've noticed here is the numbers following the 404 are always 0 and 2. And if we look at the, the header down here, so the last field is the time it took, the bytes that were transferred the bytes that were received and the win32 status and the substatus and the main status here. Um, so it's uh, reasonable to assume that the number 0 and 2 at least will stay the same and also um, and so we're going to use that as the pattern including the spaces because that's important. So I'm just going to copy this and paste that in here. Of course with the asterisks before front. Again the space here is on purpose. And hit OK. So now what we're saying is anytime this appears in an IS log file, log this to the event log. And let's test this out. We're gonna hit uh, we're gonna go home and hit save. And here just as a quick reminder Whenever we are going to collapse these things that we don't need. So anytime we hit, uh, we save the configuration on the machine uh, where we're running Event Century, look for the 1035 event. And we want to make sure um, that this event is logged. It tells us that the agent has picked up a new configuration. And it also shows us all the packages that are assigned and how they're assigned. So for example, are they global? Are they assigned to the computer? So in this case, everything here uh, appears to be global, including the IES package. We can see, okay, the package which just uh, created, uh, Event Sentry knows about it. We can ignore these warnings here. 
Now we're going to go back here and I'm going to request a page that doesn't exist. So as you can see, I've tried this before already. So test, we're going to go to test two. Hello, oh, not hell, but hello. Another test. So I'm trying to create a little more uh, content here because IES doesn't immediately write the log file. Sometimes it needs to accumulate a certain amount of bytes before it flushes to the log file. So keep that in mind. Uh, usually it's just navigating to the directory here and refreshing it uh, forces IES to write this to the log file. And yeah, and so if we look here, we can see the lines that I added and they're logged with the predictable 40402. So now let's take a look and see if we can see that in the event log. And there we are. It says text match one or more filter rules, package IIS, uh, actually the name of the object here, um, the path of the log file, because remember we specified any log file that starts with UE, so this tells us exactly which file this was, and it gives us the line on the log file. So here we can see that somebody requested the test.htm HTML file. The context is disabled. Um, context, if you enable that, will just show you the lines before and after the log file uh, whenever applicable, whenever that's possible. So we're going to just ignore that for now. So how do we get an email from this? Very easy. First we'll create a package where uh, we're going to manage to filter rules for IIS. So we're going to click add here just like before. So this works the same way it worked with the log file package. We're going to make this package global and we're going to go back to the application event log. We're going to right click and we'll say add include filter. Where should this filter go? And we'll say IIS errors. So this goes into the package that we just created and we're going to give this filter a name. So what's next? So events actually automatically populates this and says, okay, any event in the application event log with a warning, we can change this to error as well in case somebody goes in later and changes this. Um, with, these, with this category, with this event ID, um, send it to these actions. There's no action in the list yet, so we're just going to add the default email and we're set. Now, this should be customized a little bit since this will uh, essentially match any log file monitoring. So if, if you go in later and you add other log files that you want to monitor, whatever that may be from a custom application, for example, they'll also match this filter. Um, so one way we can easily narrow this down is by saying, well, only show me, afford uh, me events that are coming from IIS. And how can we do this? That we'll go back here and we'll utilize the content filters here. So we'll hit the plus button here and we'll say insertion strings and click preview. Well, so here we see the template of this events that we've just seen, right? So name is where we saw IAS and that's number three. That's the field number three. So we'll just go in here and we'll say field number three matches IIS. So now we'll only get an email if that uh, name field contains the word IIS, and that's going to be sent to the default email. The, again, the package here was made global, but again, you could customize this and either manually assign it to your IIS servers or use the dynamic package assignment, which is, generally speaking, uh, a little easier. And that's how easy it is. Now we just hit the Save button, and again, let's look for the 1035 event. And once that sets, anytime uh, we see an error that matches our filter rules, again, the filter rules are defined in the log file package here under event log alerts. So anytime anything you put in here matches in the log file of IIS, um, you will get an email alert. And that's really how easy it is to set up uh, an email alert in Event Century Lite for something that occurs in the log file. As you can see, it takes about uh, 15 minutes and making changes down the road is even easier. I hope this was helpful and thanks for watching.